Welcome back to Spiritual Transformation, where each week I talk to the spiritually gifted and the spiritually transformed. And this week, I'm so excited to introduce you to my special guest, Teresha Young. Hi, Teresha. How are you doing? Mary Beth, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing so well. I've been super excited for this conversation. I've been watching your show for so far and you've had some amazing guests. So I'm so honored and privileged to be having a conversation with you. I am so lucky for the guests that I've been getting, including yourself. Um, for the audience, Teresha is going to talk to us today about her journey from darkness into light, really, from, or as she calls it, from her breakdown to breakthrough, which is such a beautiful thing. That's one of the things I love focusing on is stories of transformation because it helps you become a guidepost for other people who might be going through the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's definitely been a journey, Mary Beth, let me tell you. That breakdown, which I'm sure we're going to unpack a little bit more, it was one of the worst times of my life. So I just really can't wait to share with the audience what I did in order to move me to where I am right now. I know it's a beautiful story and I am going to go ahead and catch everybody up on your bio and who you are first because I know all about you, but but they don't. And, you know, Trisha is a female you know, relationship master coach. However, this episode's for everybody. And actually, I think we should give a little trigger warning because mm -hmm. we are going to talk about some deep stuff. We're going to talk about depression. We're going to even talk about dip into suicide. So if that's something that's going to trigger you guys, or maybe you're just like not feeling it today, go ahead and save this episode to watch at another time when, when it might be, you might be feeling it a little bit more in that energy where you can handle talking about some dark stuff. And but but rest assured, we are going to bring it back straight to the light and it will be a, it'll be a wonderful episode. Actually, go ahead and hit like on this episode. If you know anyone who is struggling with depression, if you know anyone who has suicidal thoughts or tendencies, this is something you're going to want to share with them because um, we're here offering solutions. OK, so I'm going to get right into your bio. Teresa Young is an accredited and certified international relationship master coach who primarily helps single and coupled up professional and entrepreneurial women to confidently receive and achieve a loving relationship where they feel safe, which stands for secure, alive, and in their feminine energy. Based in the UK with a global business, she has over 16 years experience of developing, coaching, and mentoring individuals, showing thousands of women how to find a deeper understanding of themselves to set themselves up for dating and relationship success. She is regularly invited as a guest speaker and to share her expertise in publications on the topic of dating and relationships. Her relationship and coaching articles have been featured in online publications such as Thrive Global, TUT.com, which stands for The Universe Talks, The International Coaching News, The Ladies Coach, and Couples Learn. Her podcast, Real Relationship Talk, the podcast delivers open, non-judgmental, heart-to-heart -heart conversations about love, self-love, self-care, dating, and relationships with special guests, including the world-renowned relationship expert and television personality, Paul C. Brunson. That was an amazing episode, by the way. I loved it. He's great. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. It was such an honor and privilege to have him on the show. And yeah. for those who don't know who Paul C. Brunson is, he is world-renowned in the dating and relationship world anyway. And yes. he is the co-host of some major shows here. You may know of Married at First Sight. Also, there's Let's Go Dating. And he is also being called by Oprah that he is just you know, one of the most you know, influential matchmakers out there. And you know, it's really great to be able to, to have had that conversation with him. Isn't he over there? Is he in the UK right now with you? Were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he, he left the States. The he yeah. left the States. He left the States with his family and he's residing here at the moment. So it was an absolute honor and privilege to have that conversation with him. I thought I remembered him saying that in your episode. So okay. So I would love to I would love to just dig right into your breakdown, if that's okay. I would love to go back to because we want to start there and then work our way up to the how you how you got to the breakthrough to help other people. So let's go back to the year 2008 and let's talk about that long-term relationship wherever you want to start in that area. Yeah, 2008, wow. I was 
very, very young <laughs> back there. I would have been around, I said, about 24 years okay. old. Yeah, 24 years old when this situation happened. So I was with my first long-term boyfriend and had been with him for five years. We were together, my first boyfriend that I had. I lost my virginity to him, thought that he was going to be the one and he would be the only ever person that I would ever be with. Now, a bolt out of the blue, we were, I messaged him. So just to give you a bit of background, I am the eldest of four children. And through the course of growing up, my mother and father were in a dysfunctional relationship. And I call it dysfunctional because it was a relationship where my dad was emotionally, physically, and also mentally abusive towards my mother. Mm. So there was a great deal of domestic violence there. He was alcohol dependent and also dabbled with some heavy drugs too was in that mm. prison. He had numerous affairs whilst with my mum, fathered other children whilst with my mum. So Gosh. there was a lot of dysfunction growing up. So I had a really distorted view about relationships and very huge generalisations about men, not just because of what I saw about my dad, but other people in my family circle and what I was witnessing. So I didn't really see them very favourable. So to open myself up to love was a huge step for me, a huge trust in step. So we were building a relationship together as savings accounts. We're talking about mortgages, all of this. It was a particular night where my dad was being violent to my mum. And he was my boyfriend. He was going out with some friends. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, would you please stay with me? I need you here with me right now because I don't know what's happening. I just need some support. And he said, no. He went out with his friends for the meal and for the dinner that he was going to have. And that was really, really heartbreaking for me. So I messaged him and I'll just let him know how I was feeling. I got a message back from him that evening saying, it's not working. The relationship's over by text message after five years. Oh. And I was in shock. I was like, are you for real? Are you absolutely for real? Like, I, 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 are you drunk no that's not my you've gone out with your friends are you drunk? Right. you know what what is going on here he was absolutely serious mm. and there was no build-up we were fine I was young he was young just had the little nitpicking arguments but nothing to actually warrant a relationship breakup but it was over absolutely over and my heart was broken and she didn't really even give me any real explanation as to it. I wanted to meet up with him and there was no, nothing. There was resistance from him. So this just sent me into a downward spiral. And then all of my harsh traumas were coming up, all of my limiting beliefs, everything that happened at school as well. You know, you have school traumas about not fitting in with peers and self-esteem issues. Everything just came up in that moment. I'm and not good enough. I'm not enough. I'm not enough for this person. Right. Enough for this person. You now, how can I trust anybody? I gave myself, I gave my all. I trusted and it's over. You know, how did I not see this coming? I was blindsided. And I just literally remember just, I was at my grandma's house actually, bless her, because she's no longer here with us. But I was at my grandma's house at the time, staying with her for the weekend when I got this message. And I was literally on the floor in the bedroom I was staring, just clawing at him just clawing at this patterned carpet, just crying, wailing my eyes, but trying to be quite quiet at the same time because I didn't want to upset my grandma. I didn't want her to know what was happening. Right, right, right. So I was trying to be discreet at the same time. But I kind of moved on. I just went with the flow, told everybody who I needed to tell that me and that person at the time weren't together. And I just kept in motion. I kept in motion. I have a HR management background, so I was doing my corporate job. Nobody could tell. But how I liken it, you can see here I've got some swans um, beside me. Yeah. And I kind of liken it to being like a swan when you're gliding along a water and everything is so elegant and smooth. But under that water, flat, 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 paddling, just really going ferociously, just trying to claw on for anything. But I just was not happy. I just wasn't myself. I didn't feel buzzing. I didn't feel alive. And it got to the point where... I just didn't even want to be here anymore, Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. And that took a while, actually. It took like a good maybe 18 months or so for me to actually start to feel that I don't want to be here anymore. 
So is it okay if I now go into the next part? Of yeah, well, I was going to ask you, do you think that's like you were kind of just because you were suppressing your feelings, like it was kind of created some sort of chemical imbalance because you're not when you don't deal with your feelings, you keep pushing them down, you you end up like they're still there. Those feelings are still there. And then they start, you know, causing wreaking havoc in your body, causing chaos. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. At that time, I wasn't even very kind to myself. And I haven't really openly shared this. So this is going to be a bit of an exclusive for you. But I went through a period of bulimia, too, oh. because I wasn't being kind to myself. And I thought that one of the reasons why he ended it with me because I was overweight. Oh. I, I, those those, those self-esteem issues. I wasn't overweight at all. I was probably one of my lightest weights when I was that age but there must have been a reason he wasn't giving me a reason so obviously I'm not attractive anymore so what can I do about that so I started to purge my food afterwards and I just got really ill my skin got into really bad condition and everything like that and I just looked so gaunt I looked like a lollipop you know like a massive head with a small body mm -hmm. and but I felt <laughs> You just gave me a visual. I'm sorry. And and we know like just for and so, some people in the audience might not know, but yeah. eating disorders, that's a form of control. Like that's because it we is. don't. Yeah, that's that's all about control. I've struggled myself, too, by the way. And and it's all connected. All of that stuff is when we don't feel safe, when we feel out of control in our lives. Yeah. It's like, well, at least I can control my weight. <laughs> well, absolutely. And I control. I can binge eat whatever I want. He'll be gone afterwards. Yeah. And I'm saying it in a way that might be like Jess, but that's how I was dealing with it at that time. So it's not to you no know, discredit what the whole, you know, this eating disorders or anything like that. That's how I felt. I felt in control. And afterwards I felt like, oh yeah, you know, move on. It was my sense of control. It just really just it was a catalyst. It was one thing after another, one thing after another. And like you were saying, it did suppress to the point where I think there was a chemical imbalance. Mm -hmm. I do think it really was getting to the point where the actual, the mind and the body just couldn't function anymore. I couldn't function in this hyperactivity that I was doing at work, for example, this mask that I was putting on around my family, around my friends and smiling and joking. But deep down, I was destroyed. I right. actually was destroyed and it just got to that one time that one moment in it was December 2009 and it was such a cold winter's night it was and I sat back and I just I just didn't want to be here I just said no more I just felt empty I felt flat so I decided to because everything's a choice to take right. an impulsive overdose. What did that look like? It was various different concoctions. It actually was a bottle of what we call it like Lambrini, which is um, <laughs> some white wine as okay. well. So I thought, let me mix some alcohol with some pills, with some night nurse and all of this kind of stuff. I just made up, it was like a cauldron basically. I was just like putting everything in there just to say, if I do this super thing, this super stuff, I'm not going to wake up. Right. So I wrote a suicide note and I remember it was just on the back of an envelope. It was my car insurance envelope. And I still got a copy of it because I took a picture, actually. So wow. it was my car, in car insurance envelope. I was living at home at the time, sharing a room with my sister. My brother and sister had their own place and my mum and dad were still together at that time. They're not together anymore. Um, because my mum, just to finish off that story, after 30 years, she knew that my dad wasn't going to change. So she brought the marriage to an end and she set, herself, her. she set herself free. I'm so super proud of her for making that decision. Yeah. At that time, they were together. I wrote my suicide note. But what I did is I put it in between some textbooks that I had because back in the days, I used to study sociology, economics and business studies. And I had some massive textbook at the end of my bed, even though it was years old. I just that was my bookshelf at the end of my bed. I squeezed it in between the books. I didn't want it to be openly obvious for anybody waking up to see the note. I thought if they rummage through my things, they will find it. Hmm. Took the overdose. And I said bye to the world. And I was in shock. I was sad, but I just didn't care. I just didn't care. And I woke up. The next morning, I woke up really, my eyes gluky because of everything that I had taken. It was just a real mess, but I woke up. 
and it was in that moment and it was a really nice bright winter's morning and I looked outside my window so if I get a bit emotional because well you haven't even told this story um before no take your so, time it was like one it was like a haha -ha moment I call it the shift Mm. Wayne Dyer would call it The Shift as well. The Shift. The shift. That's a great shift. movie. Yeah. It is a fantastic movie. And I just knew that I was given another chance. And you know, in that moment when you take a deep breath and you go, what is my next best step? <laughs> so I went to talk to my GP, my doctor, and I explained the situation. And she listened and she said, well, there's two things that can happen. You can have a course of antidepressants, take some pills and that should help. We can also offer you cognitive behavioral therapy. And I had never heard of it before. And she said, it's a therapy that can help you to gather your thoughts and to, to help you move forward. Now, I'm not one for taking medication, so to speak. And that's no judgment to anybody who makes that choice for me. I wanted to try the therapy. And I think that's really because I had the HR management background too. So I was into coaching and people and I like solutions. I really like solutions. Right. So I said, therapy could be a solution. So I had a course of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. And when I started to witness my thoughts and realize, oh my goodness, it all starts with my thoughts and my beliefs. And if I change that thing, then <laughs> it changes my feelings, right? Oh, it, oh my gosh. How and about that? that? my feelings have changed and now I'm taking different actions my behaviors change. what and then I'm getting better outcomes in my life like wow it was like I call it the T acronym your, your thoughts affect your feed like, your thoughts affect your emotions T E that affects the actions that you take the A and that's the results you get T so I was like oh my goodness I've never heard that acronym before that's cool yeah. I'm gonna write yeah. that down Thoughts, right. emotion, yeah. Thoughts, emotions, actions, results. Tear. Thank you. So I start, you're welcome. You're so welcome. <laughs> so I'm stealing what, that material. <laughs> take that material. I don't believe it's probably from somebody. I'll give else you credit. <laughs> or credit wherever I got that from. I'm sure I saw that somewhere. Um, however, when I started to do that, I started to apply it to all situations in my life, and I thought, who else doesn't know this? Who else? So I made it my divine mission to spread the word about how we can navigate our thoughts our feelings and our emotions and how that can produce the outcomes in our life so I studied I went and I done life coaching qualifications I did counseling I also got my master coach qualification I looked into Reiki became a Reiki practitioner level two I also started on my journey of just understand a bit more about NLP. I really wanted to understand so many different modalities and teach it in a way that resonates with people. And I also got a qualification in CBT as well. So I always nice. wanted to gather, I just wanted to have a nice little pot of things that I could draw upon and help people with. And so much so that it had led me to starting up my own business. So I left my HR management job when I became pregnant with my daughter. After maternity leave, I decided that I didn't want to go back and that I was going to start my coaching business full time. So that's what kind of led me to doing what I do now. But along the way, I tapped into so many things because when I experienced the shift, at the same time, my sister was just starting to explore the law of attraction and also spirituality. So I believe that this shift happened for me at a time of my sister. Everything's about divine timing was also yes. exploring the law of attraction. So she introduced me to the law of attraction and she took me to one of our local markets where she introduced me to crystals. And when she introduced me to some crystals, there was the guy on the, the market store and he had the clear quartz pendulum. It's like the, what do you call it? Just the, the stone really that he had. And yeah. he moved it around my hand. Oh, the pen like a pendulum? Like a pendulum type thing. Yeah, that he moved. And he just turned it around and I could feel that energy and when yeah. I felt that energy in me I said there is something bigger and greater than me mm -hmm. what's this higher source what's this source energy that I am tapping into right now because I need more of this 
so I started to explore other crystals, rose quartz. You know, you've got the general one that people know about amethyst, hematite, in um, labradorite, you know, all of these other crystals that I started to explore and work with those too. So it really opened up my mind to spirituality, started to follow some really great people, such as, as I mentioned before, the late Wayne Dyer. Then we've also got Abraham Hicks that I started to tap into. Oh, Absolutely yeah. love Abraham Hicks. One of the books actually that really helped me on my journey of finding love again was a book by Deepak Chopra called The Path of Love or The Path to Love, I think it's one of those ones. And oh, when I just, it just resonated. The whole spiritual side resonated and I got comfort in knowing that I wasn't alone. In that moment, in my darkest moment, I felt alone. And if I had known then what I knew now, and at that time I had that shift, it would have been very different. I wouldn't have got to that moment. Right. But as I say, it's in your darkest moments that you find your brightest light. And I found that light and I started to explore all of these different modalities. And it's just been, it's been a game changer for me, Mary Beth, since exploring it. And I can use what I've learned to be able to to move me and other people to different places as well and I've got so many different techniques that I use in order to help me with that and my dark night of the soul was centered around alcohol addiction and mm. like and I, I know what's true for me and I feel like you'll probably say the same but I wouldn't change a thing like I'm so thankful thankful for the darkness because I don't know that without that contrast that you ever, you know, can really have that spiritual awakening, you know, you kind of almost need to have that, that dark, would you, would you, if you could do it all again, would you change anything if you knew that you wouldn't know what you know now? Absolutely not. I now embrace my shadow and I work my light. Me too. Because there is going to be shadow elements as we grow, as we evolve through this journey, it's all growth. At that time, I thought, because I was so young, I was only 24 at that time, and I thought life was over. I didn't see hope. I didn't have the expectation. My future had been taken away from me. That's what it felt like. I was robbed at that time. But now I see so differently. And now I work very intentionally with the law of attraction. I work deliberately with it to understand how we can all of the outcomes we are attracting even quote um, the low vibrational outcomes perhaps and the high vibrational right. outcomes it's it's coming to us and its question is so where am i right now what is causing this situation how am i in this or i, I like to call like the pendulum you know what's it, what is going around what's what's in it so it takes a lot of self evaluation with compassion and forgiveness because that's one of the things i had to learn was self forgiveness I had to forgive myself for that decision that I made at that time and the impact because what I haven't shared is that my youngest sister found the envelope after, mm. yeah, after everything had happened. She was a very nosy younger sister, I have to say. <laughs> there's there's 11 years between us, so she would have been, what, about 13? <laughs> 13, when we oh, didn't my stuff. Yeah. And she said, Teresha, or my family called me Tish. They said, she said, Tish, she goes, what's this? And when she asked me and I had to explain to her, it really broke my heart because then it made me think, I almost lost that. I almost lost my relationships. I almost lost my family, everything like that. So it is all growth and it's all learning experiences. And you know, what I've done you know, since, I really tapped into the energy of angels. And when I started to work with angels and believe that I am guided by angels, you've got the archangels, you've got, there's so many angels, there's so many wonderful angels. And I started to work very intentionally with them and to trust them, to ask for their guidance and their support. I actually did Kyle Gray, I'm not, for, I'm not sure if people know of who Kyle Gray is, but I he- I think I too. I, he he is um he's an angel he's an angel guide an angel mentor so to speak you can find him in Hay House I think most okay. people might have had Hay House um he's got so many different um courses that he does he's got decks oracle decks all those kind of things and I did his course and I became a certified angel guide oh nice so 
it's a, a beautiful energy for me to just be able to to call upon the angels and to seek their guidance and to trust their guidance and they will communicate with me in various different ways now I believe in so many different source energies I believe in God the universe angels I believe that I've got my spiritual guides my Reiki guides my ancestors I believe that everyone's working as a huge team you know to work together I call them like my emeralds with the emeralds team so we work together in order to support each other and various different clairs that I am familiar with so I believe that I have clairsentience so it's that that feeling I'm very much a feeling person my star sign is a Pisces so I feel like I'm very intuitive very much in my emotions so I need to navigate quite well Um, and also claircognizant I do believe that there's an an unknowing that I can sometimes have and when I get messages I know that my angels are guiding me so for example they will communicate with me through words so it might be song lyrics or I might see might hear it or I might actually see it So if I've got something on the TV and usually I've got Spotify on the TV, just playing some music and you can see the name of a song title and I'll see that and I think, oh, that's a message for me. Or I might see a certain word a couple of times within 24 hours and I know that's a piece of information for me to take note of and to maybe do something with. So I call upon my angels and I really use that to help me and to give me that comfort now. And it's just been absolutely amazing. And I call upon my my angels as well to do protection prayer. I think it's really important that, you know, when we are very spiritually minded, that we understand that there's sometimes there can be some some daggers, some unintended daggers that might come our way. Um, and also we just really want to protect our energy because we are more I guess, vulnerable to other other feelings of a presence is no coming in so it's just really a case of no protecting ourselves if you're empathic especially if yeah you need to protect yourself because and also just we get psychically attacked it's a it's a real thing and i've by the way when you're talking about the clairs my top two are also clairsentience clairsentience and claircognizance and then i've on several occasions now I've seen angels in the, and and that's my lowest one is clairvoyance, but yeah. I, it's, get, it's developing. So I've been able mm-hmm. to see them as orbs of light with the naked eye. And I've been able to see auras sometimes, not all the time, just every now and then. And so I'm working on that. And that's something that I want people to know is you can develop any of these clairs. You're going to always have some that are like stronger. You're, you're, yeah. you're top two, maybe usually it's top two. And then, yeah. um, but I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, I think it's so fun to develop our abilities. And, you know, what do you say to the people who think, because I come across this all the time, like, because I'll get downloads and signs and all that. And people will tell you, oh, that's just coincidence. I just, that, that's <laughs> just, you know, what do you say to those people? I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and also they, they haven't experienced it firsthand too. Like if they saw angels, like I seen, then they wouldn't question it anymore. But it's like, or do we just maybe just let them have their own journey? And <laughs> yeah, I, I want to convince them. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's real. Okay, it's not woo woo. It's not in my head. It's very very real. <laughs> I believe that it's a, it's a case of respecting people's journeys and yeah. inviting them to understand more about the journey if they want to do so. Again coincidences I do not believe in coincidences I believe in synchronicities I believe that everything is happening for a reason or there's a reason for everything so it's understanding what's the learning what's the lesson what's the blessing you can take from it and when you can see the beauty in it and I say the word beauty and it's not always easy to find what the beauty is in that moment what is the learning at that time when I was in my darkest spot I couldn't see any beauty there I couldn't see anything that was great about that situation hindsight is a wonderful thing and I look back and I think how I have evolved since then my lessons and my learnings how I'm able to now just be open-minded about exploring other things feminine energy for example like what I said before and I, and I use that in my business and my coaching business with the women that I work with is when you can learn about energy as well and how we can use that to our advantage, then we are able to use that in a way like my feminine energy, I can be more in flow, I can be receptive, I can allow myself to receive. And that's been great for my business because it right. means that I can be in my masculine energy because I'm running my business. So I have to have the vision and the goals and I have to be the leader when it comes to my business. 
equally it's striking that harmony to be able to sit back and say but I also allow myself to receive and this is why I think especially when we are we've got a business whether it's a spiritual business whatever business whatever we're having it's really important that we do make sure that we are protecting our energy and preserving our energy because as you said we impasse or we did with a lot of people we encounter a lot of energy so there was a particular prayer that I do um, in order to protect my energy on every day I also do it with my daughter as well and I just wondered if I could maybe share it with the audience absolutely we please do it might be something that resonates with you so what I have done is I have combined the prayer from words that have been used by Kyle Gray and also my angelic mentor Anna Grace Taylor and you can also you can find about them on the internet they're well-known people so what I do is you know, each night before I go to bed, I will speak to the angels and excuse me if I just maybe shut my eyes for a moment so I can just really you know, tap into it. But this is what I would say. I would say, Archangel Michael, thank you, thank you, thank you for cutting away any energetic cords that exist between myself and anybody else. Any spiritual presence, any places, any situations, any stories, any fears, any emotions and any other stuff that is no longer serving my highest good and stands between me and my goodness and my greatness. And Archangel Raphael, thank you, thank you, thank you for filling the voids and gaps where those cords once were with your healing love and light energy. For I am the keeper of my mind and body. Wherever love is present, fear is a stranger and love is here. I am safe, I am free, I am the light. And Archangel Michael, thank you, thank you, thank you for placing me in a healing bubble of safety and protection. I am safe, I am free, I am the light. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you can end with amen, and so it is, if you want to. And it's just the way. Just I to love it, and so it is, and so it is. And I so can be like, we're commanding it. This is this is the new and, reality, and this is now. It is, it is exactly. And why I've asked Archangel Raphael to step in is because when you remove something, the universe abhors a void you have to fill it with something else so therefore when you ask archangel raphael to fill it with healing love and light energy is not longer a void for anything else to come in that we might not want so it's a case oh, of that just makes fitting. sense yeah fill the void with something else and that's when it, whenever we do anything in life actually if you remove something from your life replace it with something because otherwise we will have like addictions like, like that's, addictions. that's we have to replace it with something healthy there's healthy yeah. addictions out there like when I quit yeah. drinking I turned into a gym rat I was at the gym all the time working yeah. out because but that was good I don't have to do that anymore you know but instead of going to happy hour I went to work out you know like <laughs> for yeah. a while that was my crutch absolutely and that was a positive change for you at that Correct. time so therefore if you didn't do that after you removed alcohol there might have been a quote-unquote unhealthy habit mm -hmm. that would have replaced it so we have to be very intentional about replacing it it's called with cross something. addictions you can cr cross them into something you know sometimes some people do it even even worse yeah you know yeah which is great and actually talking about addictions i've got your addiction recovery cards here <gasps> i love that you have them I have them. They are absolutely amazing. I'm plugging this for Mary Beth, by the way. If she's not giving it herself. These are amazing it cards. Feels like I'm paying herself. you. <laughs> I swear I'm not. So but I want to down there. No, there's no there's no link. This is absolutely you know, coming from the heart. These are amazing set of cards, addiction recovery cards with the law of attraction. And that's what I didn't really know how much law of attraction influenced your spiritual growth um yeah. but that's totally like almost 100 percent. like what changed me around is learning about the law of attraction and it sounds a little bit like the cognitive behavioral therapy like we're just learning like oh my gosh my thoughts my feelings yeah my actions like they, they have a direct effect and we're supposed to feel our emotions and yeah. i think when, when i first learned about law of attraction i was doing the spiritual bypassing way like i would you know, not want to think anything negative at all, positive vibes only. Oh, and then, yeah. and that's not the way to do it. We use our emotions as, as um, indicators. Okay. How am I feeling? And then we, we, we use them. You emotions are good. I think it's Abraham Hicks who says something like, you don't want to put a happy face sticker over your gas gauge. <laughs> you know, you want to know when it's empty because yeah. then, you know, you got to go fill up. Yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And when we embrace emotions like that in terms of these indicators, then simply we can remove the judgment behind the emotions. Because yes. emotions are just emotions. They are indicators. There's no good or bad emotions. It's just an indicator of where you are right now. So how can we navigate that emotion? Because, and how can we, it's all about taking inspired action too. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about the word law of attraction, the word attraction, when you look at the spelling of it, has the word action in it. So there's I'm, no law of attraction without taking action. I say it all the time. I feel like a robot because I say it so much. Yeah, for sure. And it's so true because you no, know, we can talk about the secret and all of those kind of things where it didn't feel like there was too much. It was uh, an introductory uh, video. So I'm glad they introduced it to the world, but it, yeah. it could almost do some damage because then people think, oh, I can just like think positive thoughts and meditate and you know these yeah. things are just going to be come to me no like like you got my cards it i took a lot of action to bring those into the material form it yeah. sure that the original idea i attracted it it was downloaded to me it wasn't even my idea you know i, I was what I, the job that i did was i got myself on a high enough frequency to where i was open to receive it you know yeah. we're always receiving stuff but you know you want to be as much as you can you're the observer of your thoughts be the witness like you said earlier don't judge your thoughts just be like yes. you know i kind of always say isn't that interesting like if i'm feeling mm. some some kind of way i'm like isn't that yeah. interesting so i'm just observing it i'm the witness you know mm -hmm. i'm not judging it i just kind of analyze and okay what why am i feeling this like and i want to figure it out because that self-awareness is the key we want to figure out what is in my subconscious that's making me feel triggered or making yeah. you know whatever it might be because as soon as we bring those subconscious feelings to our conscious mind we're that's how we heal them because we we're not the, that kid anymore we're not the wounded child anymore we don't need to feel yeah. that way we can yeah. take care of ourselves we're, we're not dependent on our parents to keep us alive anymore so we don't have to have all of those those anxious feelings <laughs> 100 percent. and what you're saying there is that that curiosity you know be curious marvel like a child as you said you no know, oh isn't that interesting you know what could this mean and like, what can i learn from this you know all of these curious questions that we can ask because it really does expand that mind so when you were talking about for example earlier the downloads that you can get it's really important that we do pay attention to what we are receiving because we're receiving a lot of information. And particularly when you have a new thought, a new inspired thought, jump on it. Because we can have, they say, anything between, what, 60,000 report uh, thoughts every single day. But a lot of those are negative. So when we're feeling the negative yeah. feelings, guys, you don't you don't take actions on the negative stuff. Those are yeah. the ones you ignore. It's the when you're feeling that high vibe. Abraham calls it being in the vortex. It's the joy. Right. It's the, whoo, that's the ones you want to jump on. The other ones, when, I, when I'm in a bad way, I don't even leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> if I can help it, if I don't have to, because I, I kind of know how it goes. Everything yeah. I touch is going to turn to crap that day. So <laughs> I yeah. stay away from people. You stay away from it. And that's absolutely fine. <laughs> if you notice a pattern, it's about understanding what works for us and what doesn't necessarily work for us. And the things that work for us, remember those things. For me, meditation really works for me. Visualization really works for me. Reiki works for me. You know, um, affirmations work for me now after you introduce Woo! me to affirmations and you know, affirmations do look into the difference between the two because you might you know, want to explain that because i don't i don't know that my audience would know what that is ah. so affirmations generally i think lots of people know that is like a mantra you say i am this and sometimes we can actually question it we may say it, but we don't truly believe it but rather an affirmation is more about being sure with the o with, with the apple yes yeah Affor affirmation and it's all about having that curiosity by asking yourself some questions, some what questions. So, for example, you might say, I am beautiful. And you, that might be the affirmation that you want to say to yourself. But an affirmation is more about, so what makes me beautiful? Or how am I beautiful? How did I get so beautiful? <laughs> beautiful. And you ask those questions because the brain starts to look for the answers because that's what the brain, you've, you've tasked the brain. So now it's going to, oh, this is how. So when you change it into, you know, that curious question, it actually gets the brain 
thinking it works it goes back into the catalogs and says oh this is it evidence 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 because we have to think about how our beliefs are actually backed up by evidence so our limiting beliefs are also going to be backed up by evidence to support that limiting belief so if you want to have a new empowering belief you're going to have to find evidence to back that up too so again when you ask those affirmations questions then it can really it's a new way of doing it and it's really it's, it's helped me like I've, our I've subconscious seen... mind doesn't know the difference between reality and fantasy our subconscious mind doesn't have a sense of humor so when we yeah. start asking the question like oh how did like let's say you're single how yeah. did i how did i find the most amazing man to be in a relationship with? how did i how do i have the most perfect boyfriend you're mm -hmm. asking it your subconscious mind s s believes it. Believes yes. what you. That's why you got to be careful what you say and what you think, because you know, you, you're gonna you're gonna create it in your reality. So that's yeah. that's why you're gonna ask it as a question. Your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference, and will start kind of like conspiring with the universe, literally, to to bring that into fruition, to bring it into material form, and it it works. It, it's I have so many amazing stories from clients, from friends, from myself that yeah. um the hardest part is remembering to do it it's so, it's so silly <laughs> like i and need to like it. just set my alarm to do it every day and that's the thing it's i have lots of notes i have lots of reminders that come up on my phone actually reminding me mm -hmm. to do things um such as meditation supplements that your previous guest the wonderful andrea ramirez oh yeah about, um meditation supplements and how you can use that throughout your day so that you don't have to have that five ten minutes sitting down doing meditation you just be pretty present with what you're doing when you're having that cup of tea really tap into all of the senses that is a form of meditation yes so i've set up little reminders in my phone to remind me because i can be on the go but i get a reminder saying meditation supplement and i'm like oh breathe look at my surroundings how can i be present in that moment and so it's a habitual way of doing things that just becomes it natural normal because we have to remember that when we start doing something different it doesn't feel natural and normal to us and it might throw our nervous system out of whack you know because it's like oh I know what's going on danger danger I don't feel safe so this is why we start to do things slowly so that it becomes more natural and normal to us and you know really tapping into being just asking those questions and it's really important because I've also used you know, my spirituality for physical healing as well. I, after I had my daughter um, in 2017, it was discovered that I had some benign tumours on my mm. liver and they were non-cancerous, but they had to be monitored. And at that point, I knew that I was going to seek spiritual healing too, because on the physical, there was nothing that they can do apart from change your diet, do this. I was pretty much, I was kind of good. So yeah, I could change my diet, but I just knew that there was a higher force. So I did Reiki. I done prayers. I tapped into some very specific energies when it comes to the angels of healing, health healing. I worked with crystals. I had healing baths. I did whatever I could to tap into spirituality and also worked with a spiritual animal because I believed in spiritual animals when it comes to specific things. And it was during the pandemic, I wasn't able to have any more checkups because I wasn't really seeing people if it wasn't urgent. But after they started seeing patients again, I in last year, 2022, I went back and had that scan done on my liver and I got a letter come back and he was with the ultrasound saying, where, where was it again? Where, where, nice. where were you? Where were, these, where were these tumors? And he said, I can't find them. That no sizable tumor can be found. Gone. Love it. Absolutely. As I'm holding my angel light crystal. Yeah. You know, the, just to, for, I think a lot of my audience is not, they don't really know a lot about this stuff yet. So like, like that's what we're doing is we're trying to make this spiritual stuff kind of demystify it a bit. Yeah. And with crystals and things like the, everything's energy right so everything vibrates at a different rate and crystals vibrate at a very high they're very high rate and that's what makes them very healing and they help you connect to the spirit realm that's a short version of it did you want to add anything to it it's absolutely and there's crystals for all different types of healing yes. and we say healing. this one connects me to angels <laughs> absolutely and they're beautiful and some of these crystals are actually like tumble stones. If you don't know where to put your crystal, we 
you can pop it in your bar. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I saw, I saw, I better send you a meme that I saw today, a hilarious <laughs> meme that is, around it's really, it relates, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to receive it because mm -hmm. I don't have this. I don't have my purse with me. So if there's certain crystals that I want to just feel the energy of, because they, and you know, the energy, I'll just pop it in my bra. It's absolutely fine. Just remember when you take that bra off. So you have to be careful, otherwise the crystal is broken. Probably but, cancels yeah. out. Some of them can probably cancel out the um, like radiation from our cell phones. Oh, oh yeah, They're absolutely. Like the hematite, maybe. I know. Hematite. I know. I've heard. I know. I've heard some of them can. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I should start doing and that. As you said, everything is energy. Science backs that up. It's just yeah. another form of energy so if people are listening to this and it is slightly out of their depth or they're feeling overwhelmed it's a case of just take your time with it take what resonates leave the rest bite because size too like because that's how i learned i wasn't you know i mean i wanted to learn really fast and you feel like you are but when i think about even just gosh you know just a year ago how much more like and it's not like there's an end to it by the way what i've noticed is the more i know the more i feel like there's so much more to know. <laughs> yeah, there, there is so much more to know. And yeah. I know we were having a, a conversation um, a little bit before in terms of some, some of the life changes that I've made because we spoke about health. And also I made a decision three years ago to stop drinking alcohol as well. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that, actually. And I don't even – I think that we've talked about that and you weren't really even having – a, like I would, I would have, I was definitely abusing alcohol, but mm -hmm. in your situation, you just kind of wanted to see what was going to happen. Is that <laughs> the case? <laughs> Curiosity. Let's and level up. up. Will I start levitating without alcohol? So, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> it worked. No, you still soon you see me. Oh, look, here I go. <laughs> you're, you're like one of the most high vibing people I know. So I think it did work. <laughs> it, it probably did. Now, you levitate. Yeah, ask my daughter. She's like, oh, she levitates all the time around the house. <laughs> um, but I just was curious. In actual fact, I was going through a little bit of a a tough 2020, not because of the pandemic, so to speak. I mean, that was a tough time, but there were some right. other personal things happening in my life at that time too. And I was just feeling that when I, if I had alcohol or had a, a glass of wine, I, I love Prosecco and also some rosé wine, maybe like one glass, two glasses a week. That was it at the weekend. But after I had it, I just wasn't feeling good about mm -hmm. myself. And the energy, I just wasn't aligned with it. I wasn't finding any reason for it. So I said, why? Why Why have it? I'm only having it about once or twice a week anyway. So let's remove it. And I removed it cold turkey. So smart. Turkey. So the cold turkey, I just, and I haven't had for three years now, a sip of alcohol whatsoever. When I go to a restaurant and I see a little bit of wine in the, in the sauce, I'm like, Oh, oh no. what's it gonna That's do? That's funny. Yeah, I see all of that, but I don't miss it. I don't regret it. And since having it, I have felt a deeper sense of clarity. Mm -hmm. Energy levels have increased. I feel so much more attuned to my intuition and my gut feeling. And just the intuitive hits that I get and the insights have been amazing. Exactly. Oh, so that's on a spiritual level. I can only imagine what it's doing for me on a physical level too. Well, it's a depressant and that's definitely, that's facts. You know, it's a depressant and it does, it lowers your, every, your, your vibration. We'll talk about it spiritually. And this is some people are going to argue with this, but I know a lot of people personally, including myself, where um, you can't, when you keep raising your vibration, you start to be able to no longer tolerate lower vibrational substances and and i it was overnight for me like i just couldn't tolerate it anymore i started to um get um like rashes and itchy skin and a, a lot of a lot of weird physical symptoms like that where i was able to drink and then I started to meet a lot of people. And then I hear it on podcasts where people who once they like really when they're leveling up spiritually, they can no longer tolerate these. Yeah. And it, it is a lower vibrational substance. But that does, and, and what I want to say now is that doesn't mean you guys, if you drink wine, that you're low vibing. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it's different for different people. 
But for me personally, like I was no longer able to tolerate it. And, and I mean, probably I'm going to say about eight different people that I, that I know same thing happened where they kept working on their spiritual transformation and then they could no longer have it. It happens with even coffee too. You know, yeah. that's what I'm trying to get rid of right now, actually. <laughs> Well, exactly. And things like sugar, which is something that I'm sugar, trying. Sh- sugar's yeah. gone for me. The sugar's definitely a no-no for me. My body was like, no, I, yeah, I exactly. can't even have it if I want to. My body <laughs> rejects it. It might get to a point where my body does it, but at the moment it's still tolerating it. But it is something that I want to also, you know, consider elimin- eliminating too for my life. And for me, what I've learned you know, through my breakthrough so everything that I've been sharing now has been the breakthrough from having the breakdown and what I am now learning because it's a journey it's not a destination is I'm making decisions proactively rather than reactively so a lot of the changes that happened in my life my that led me to shifts have been because there's been some sort of tower moment mm-hmm. something's come crashing down there's been one major catalyst that has driven me for some way to make a change but now, because of everything that I'm tapped to when it comes to spirituality, it's almost like I've got that foresight. I've got that knowing that something has to change. So it's not reactive, it's proactive. And that's been one of the most you know, significant things for me is the proactivity around it. Now, I, that. I, I, can, I can feel I can feel the energy doing. I'm like, oh, OK. And also what that has done is helped me with my relationships, too, mm. because it's helped me to be very soft and compassionate and you know, having some self-compassion all of those things in my relationship I really do believe that when we are connected to our our inner self and our way of being that it crucial is crucial for our relationships it's crucial for the way that we communicate the mm-hmm. energy the vibes that we give off that we can you know feel back from people it's like that ripple effect is that when they feel that from you it's just absolutely amazing. People are looking to say, you just, you just, there's something about you. There's just something in your aura. You know, right. it's like, it's, it's just, it's just there and people feel it. So when you are, when you do raise your vibration like that, they say that you really do affect the people around you. Like you can heal people just by being around them, just by having a conversation with them. When you really get into those higher vibrations that you, you do have an effect because we're all connected energetically. And everybody can feel, everybody can. Like I try to explain to people, like, just think when you walk into a room and everybody's being quiet, but you're like, okay, something weird's going on. Like there's like, it feels tense. You're you're feeling the energy, you know, you can feel that it's. Yeah, you can absolutely feel it within you. This is why there is collective healing. This is why there is distant healing that can mm-hmm. be done because energy will shift it will flow you know it says where attention goes energy flows so you can actually you know you can give people that and this is why I'm so connected with my daughter so my daughter is going to be seven years old very soon in the next few oh, months wow. I can't whew, whew, I remember carrying her and I believe that we chose each other she chose me to be her mother absolutely daughter, and I chose her and my daughter is navigating life with some challenges right now. She's got a diagnosed disability underpinned by a very rare genetic condition called MED13L syndrome. So currently she's pre-verbal. So she's wordless, so to speak. However, our vibes and our energy, it just speaks for itself. You communicate. We both, we are, we're still communicating, not verbally. But she would just look at me. I can just feel her looking at me and I look at her and we lock eyes and we just laugh. Mm-hmm. And that's all that is needed. So that's the beauty of you know, energy is that you don't even have to say anything. You just feel the connection. And because I have this spiritual awareness and belief, I feel completely guided when it comes to raising her as my daughter. If I was in my complete 3D, I probably could have been roamy. Oh, life is tough. This is yeah. so hard. Oh my God, it's difficult raising the child, let alone a child who has a diagnosed disability, has some physical limitations, isn't speaking cognitively. She's seven years, well, she's actually seven years old um, when it comes to chronological age, but cognitively about three and a half year old. Like she's running at half her age. I could be like, oh my goodness, why, why, why? But I believe that there's a reason for everything. And she is one of my greatest teachers. And yes. we're just 
So, so okay. actually when it comes to numerology, we're both number one. So we're both leaders as well when it comes oh, to wow. numerology. So there's so many things that we are connected with. And she keeps me grounded. She's a Capricorn. So we got that earth, she got that earth energy going on. And I'm Pisces. So I've got that. I'm a Virgo. Energy. So we complement each other as well. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm grounded earth. Grounded. Earth. I'm not that grounded though, but I'm earthy. <laughs> <laughs> when we need to be. Yeah. So if I didn't have that level of awareness and belief in the higher source, helping me to navigate life as a mother, as a parent, you know, coexisting, co-creating with my daughter, I could be in a very different mental space right now too. Yeah, it changes your perspective on everything. Once you know this stuff, once you get into the spiritual transformation, the the knowledge that is involved in in learning all of this, there's so much to learn. And you're like, oh my gosh, it just changes your perspective. Like you you don't, it's like, just like you said, if you were living in 3D still, yeah. full, fully, fully, I know we're kind fully, of still fully, here. Fully, like fully 3D. <laughs> kind of like, still here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could be de so. devastating. We would be focused on the negative, but you know, we know more. And when, you know, you can't unknow that stuff. And what you now you know your your mind's been expanded. You can't go backwards. Right. You know well, too much. When you know when you know better, you do better. So yes. this is what I have a knowing now, and I feel very responsible for having. What's that quote? Wasn't it? With great knowledge comes great power. Was that something yes. from Spider Man or something like that? It might be. <laughs> it might be. Um, but yeah, know. no great. Um, was it with great knowledge comes great power? Something I feel you completely British. responsibility, great responsibility. Great responsibility. That's it. Yeah, with great knowledge. I, I remember the quote, but I don't know the origin. <laughs> Some, <laughs> someone that. tell us in the comments below. Oh, We're, it's it gonna is. drive us crazy. Yeah, I completely butchered that, but it's absolutely just knowing that. You now, when you have that knowing, it's like, what can you do with it? And also, for me, I feel okay to blend my religious beliefs with spirituality. So there are some people who may be like the two can't coexist. They totally coexist. They totally coexist. And there will be some people who won't be supportive of me having this conversation. And there's some religious people who will listen to this and won't be supportive of me having this conversation. They won't be supportive of the, the way that I blend the two. However, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the angels. I believe in my ancestors. I believe in guides. And it brings me peace. Jesus and, um, was the master teacher of all of this yeah. stuff. Jesus, yeah. well, I won't get into all that because that's, that's another this is video. All, that's for another episode. I but Jesus really was that. down with the law of attraction. It just wasn't <laughs> yeah. called the law of attraction. That's what he was, he was trying. One of the things he was trying to teach us was that and yeah. meditation, meditation. And then people, you'll hear Christians say meditation's um, yeah. evil, you know, but he was teaching meditation in the Bible. He was he had healing, healing hands, Reiki, right? He went, actually, he bits of disappeared from the Bible between age 12 and 32. He was gone. It just says, and he grew. And yeah. he was off in either India or Egypt, I forget which one, learning all of that stuff. He was learning how to heal with his hands. He was learning ancient esoteric wisdom. And then he came back when he was 32. And, you know, it freaked people's freak. They were freaked out. They're like, what is this guy, you know, and, and people are, when, when people are freaked out, they, you know, they can turn into haters because they don't know what they're looking at over here. Healing people seemed evil, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of judgment out there. And I would say, we are humans and we're going to have fears. We're going to have, you know, critics. We're going to be people who are like, skeptical about it and have their doubts. It's just respecting that other people have different ways of doing things. Yeah. There's they no just think need. differently. They just think differently. Embrace diversity. Embrace difference. It might not be for you, but it doesn't mean that you have to poo-poo it, so right. to speak. Just know that there is a difference. And let's just live in a world where it's okay to be different. My daughter, quote unquote, would be deemed to be different. Mm -hmm. And from like she's not neurotypical, as they would say. But however, if people were to have that judgment on her, she wouldn't be included. So embracing the differences and saying, it's okay. You have your way of thinking. I have my way of thinking. It doesn't mean that we can't coexist. Do you know what they say? The spiritual um, like reason that a soul would choose to come in with any kind of difference, like autism or or any type, type of any type of issue or even a sickness, they 
they actually it's a very evolved decision to make because number one you grow more spiritually when you come in with something and you your family grows a, a quick evolution it's a very quick evolution and the other thing is no one can box you in like think of an autistic child you're not going to box that child in they have complete freedom of their life they're smart yes. that's a smart decision yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so spiritually yeah. speaking they're like oh no one's going to control me mm -mm. Mm -hmm. we're going to yeah. do this my way just watch and guess what you cannot control them they control yeah. you <laughs> and we learn so much as i said yeah. before my daughter is my greatest teacher and what she has taught me i have so much love and respect and honor her so much for the the world that we are navigating together i have a huge amount of respect and she, you guys are adorable on oh, thank I, you i watch your i watch your just adorable Thank you. Thank you so much. It's just an honor and a privilege to be chosen as her mother and to navigate this world together. And I'm learning so much from it. And it's helping me to grow spiritually too. Accelerated growth. I believe one of your other guests spoke about accelerating accelerated growth too. Yes, I have had lots of situations in my life where I've had accelerated growth. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I'm good. I'm good with that. Because I know. Oh, you might be talking about Joan. I was trying to think. Joan, my... Um, Joan. That her son died yeah and so yeah, yeah. It, it was a joan and she was speaking about the accelerated growth yes. from that yeah and i believe that many of the major setbacks that i've had quote unquote setbacks have um prepared me for my bounce back so i can come back i love that and stronger than ever you know i wanted to touch on the suicide thing real quick yeah where um just because you were young you were like 24 and then for anyone watching like I, I've known people who've lost their children to suicide and stuff. And, and a lot of it is because you called it impulsive, right? An impulsive decision. And that's something that I wanted to make sure like anyone listening, if, if you've ever had those feelings, the way you're feeling is temporary. You're not going to always feel this way. It feels like you're going to always feel this way, but you're not. And hopefully if you're listening to this and listening to Teresha, you know, like she's, she's, we're, we're hoping that you can realize there is a way out and there is definitely people who can guide you and help you. And like you said, you got help. There's that's not a weakness. It's a strength to ask for help. It is that vulnerability is so important. There's so much support out there. There's helplines. There's family and friends you can talk to. You are not here alone. Also, if you are of the spiritual minded person, call upon the higher source, whoever you, you know, you have that connection with, call upon that. You are never alone. Your angels are always by your side. Call upon that. And you will really start to notice that when you start to navigate that and you get that help. And as I shared that TIR acronym, you can have some tremendous outcomes in your life. I am now having some of the most healthiest relationships that I have. I have an international coaching business. I am interviewing exactly. world-renowned people. The successes I've had in my life ever since my shift, tapping into my mindset, my it's a holistic way of being, my mind, my body, and my spirit. Once that all came together, the where I am right now, I could not see that. I could not you see could that. You could not conceive of it back I then. Could you could conceive. not have fathomed, like, nope. And here you are, like, no. on yeah. top of the world. Top of the world. And there's only better and more to come. And I am open, ready, receptive, and grateful to receive every ounce of it because I am co-creating and I am manifesting my world. I love that. And you know, like you talked, you said, ask for help. That is something um, interesting to insert that because of free will, we, the angels, our guides, they can't really insert themselves into our life. I think in emergency situations they can, but for the <laughs> most part, we need to ask, we need to ask for help and invite yes. them, invite them into our daily life. And I do it every day too. I've got, I've got a protection prayer um, that I say as well, every, every single day, never fail. And yeah. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people re rewinding and play, trying to get your <laughs> trying to get your prayer like wait what writing it down writing it down and I encourage them yeah. to do that because that was powerful that was a beautiful prayer I'm not going to say mine because you're you're pretty damn good <laughs> so, no judgment yeah. no judgment I mean yeah I mean mine's mine's pretty kick ass too but but yeah yours yours was definitely very detailed you covered you covered a lot in that <laughs> you did not leave anything out I did I did my best and it's about sharing and I'm sharing from a place of no fear 
no yeah. fear I'm staring from a place where we have to ask as well and there could be somebody on an energetic level that has asked for that prayer and I've just mm-hmm. given it to them right and, I, and, and I've just given it I've been the answer to that prayer so it's all about just sharing it ask believe and receive and just be very open-minded and to what don't try to figure out the hows all the time you don't know what the hows are going to be I never knew I didn't have a step-by-step plan to being where I am right now in my life being the happiest I've ever been in my life right now 2023 this year has been my best year of my adult life 100 percent the best year of my adult life could I have seen that in 2009 when I took that impulsive overdose no I could not but the trajectory of my life since then has just been amazing yes ups and downs that's a whole nother episode. oh yeah for of sure course. but we, we'll do another episode yes. on that <laughs> where I am now people think it's going to be this smooth or, or straight oh. up no it's all over the place to, to get it, to, to my 2023 as well oh, like it, oh, yeah. it's up and down yeah it, it, it's being bumped we have a higher it's set point we have a high set point yeah. now we stay it's up funny. we catch ourselves and it doesn't mean we don't feel our feelings, but we catch ourselves and we analyze things and we, we we know how to turn things around and it just becomes a habit. Yeah. So basically we are elevating. So it is going up, but it's yeah. just zigzag. <laughs> we're, we're elevated on a higher. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how it is. So it's not linear, but yes. you know what? It really is just honoring the journey, just honoring the journey, gratitude, is such a beautiful an attitude of gratitude. I practice gratitude every single day. I have a gratitude journal. I do gratitude walks. I am a state of gratitude every single day. And it's one of the highest vibrations that you can have yes. alongside joy, love. So again, I would really encourage people as well in order to help you wherever you are right now in your world, whether the highs or the lows, daily gratitude. There's always something to be grateful for. If all anybody did, if, if, if someone's watching this show and has never practiced that, has never, if all, if all you did was start appreciating something, oh, yeah. focusing on things you appreciated in 30 days, your life would not even, you would, it'd be unrecognizable. You would be so elevated if all you did was start just appreciating things that you have already. Yeah. You start, well, I, I, you start attracting more things to appreciate. Absolutely. If you're listening to this podcast, you can be grateful for hearing. Not everybody can hear. You know, so you know, just the little things that you can be grateful for and just start slow and then build up. I like to do that before I go to bed because the vibration that I'm in as well, my gratitude journal, I'm high vibing. I go to sleep and the brain's like, yes, that's fantastic energy to go to sleep. I do it throughout the day. I could do my gratitude walks, my gratitude stone, gratitude journal, all of this stuff. I always infuse, you know, I always infuse it into it. I'm so happy and grateful now that you do it for the future things that you want to receive and which you are manifesting. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am whatever it is. Right. You say it as it's already there. If there's something that's not there yet, you still say it as if it's there because all we have is the present moment. We don't want to keep our desires in the future. So we say, I'm so happy and, and thankful now that I blank fill in the blank whatever your desire is yeah i definitely that's an amazing manifestation technique right i definitely do that one and i highly recommend it to everybody so teresha i'm gonna put all of your information in the show notes so people can find you but what's your preference where's a where would you like people to find you and follow you well thank you thank you so much to everybody for listening i really appreciate your time and your attention and your energy today And if you would like to follow me, connect with me, I am across social media platforms as Teresha Young. I'm just going to put my fingers up. You can see it there. That's how it's spelled. There is a H there, Teresha Young. And you can find me across major social media platforms. I also have a website, which is www.tereshayoung.com. You can find lots of free e-guides there. Also on my Linktree bio on Instagram, there's more e-magnets and lead magnets and e-guides there you know, that you can actually use. So it's no, that you can find me there. You no, know, send me a DM. I'm always there to be able to talk if you've got any questions to and the topics of love, self-love, self-care, dating and relationships. And comment below. Teresha and I are both really good because we've I, we've done podcasts with each other in the past. Comment below if you guys have any questions about what we talked about, de- depression, su- you know, suicide. You have any concerns? We will answer you back personally. We yeah. won't. We won't send in our virtual assistant. It'll be us. <laughs> 
I'm not there yet. <laughs> and even we're, if I was there, we don't need to do that. Yeah. I know, it would feel really inauthentic. You, yeah. you, you get me. You get me. I might not just be, you know, too, like I won't be on it straight away, but you probably will hear from me within 24 hours. That's for sure. That's right. And that's what I think is even when I like have a lot of people commenting, it's still going to be me eventually. I might be late, but I'm going to get to it. You know, I, I because, it, you know, I'm, I don't want somebody else representing me personally. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not the kind of person who ghosts, who posts and ghosts. Posts and ghosts. People, yeah. A lot of people go out there, post, people will comment and they don't even interact. If you're commenting, I respect your time and energy for doing that. And I will come back and I will give you, I will give you, you know, a response to it. I'm not a posting and ghosting type of me person. Me either. I actually have a sense of urgency about it, like to where I, I, I've got to reply to people, you yeah. know, right away. It's, and maybe my sense of urgency is a little too strong. <laughs> <laughs> and they're probably sitting Reel back it back in thinking. a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No problem. You can, you can like, slow down a bit. Pacing, not racing. <laughs> exactly. I love that. Writing that one down too. So... <laughs> Teresha, it has been wonderful talking to you today. I appreciate that you shared your story with me. I didn't, I really didn't realize until right before we started recording that you hadn't really officially like done a podcast talking about this. So thank you so much for sharing because I know it's going to help tons of people. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's going to be new knowledge, actually. This is the first podcast that I've spoken about in terms of spirituality. To the you are that out podcast. of the spiritual closet, girlfriend. Uh, you are so is, far out oh. now. Yeah, they're like certified angel guide. Who? I told you I was going to pull you out of that closet. You did, and you've been true to your word. You are a very trustworthy person, Mary Beth. Yeah, you're out now. There's no going back. No more hiding. Well, I appreciate it so much. And everyone, I'm in the show notes below, I'm going to leave all of Teresha's links. Please follow her, like her. She's fantastic. She's high vibing. You, she will raise your vibration just by just by following her. So, and like, and share this episode, it'll give you good karma. I swear. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree too. All right. Well, everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.